The wild tube. Savinelli basket pipe. Let's talk about a book. Buddhist on Death Row by David Sheff. Both these people are kind of fascinating. Where did I put my notes? I don't know. So David Sheff, born December 23rd, 1955, Boston, Mass. Uh, one, one of Time Magazine's 100 most something people. <laughs> most whatever people list he made it on. Um, his claim to fame, he has a movie about his, uh, book, uh, Beautiful Boy, which is about his son's methamphetamine, uh, addiction, which I had no idea was even a thing. I gotta go check that out. I guess Steve Carell played David in it. Pretty cool. Well, I mean, meth addiction's not cool, but, um... I, I didn't know there was a, a book about, or a, a movie based on one of his books. <clears throat> That's kind of his claim to fame as uh, the beautiful boy. Um, and he's been widely recognized as a kind of a leader in the addiction, um, in the addiction recovery world. The Buddhist who's on death row is uh, Jarvis J. Masters. Um... Born 1962 in Long Beach, California, charged with armed robbery at 19. And in 1990, he ended up on death row for his part in a uh, murder of a um, guard um, in San Quentin. Oh, I'm going to be upset if that's wrong. I think it's San Quentin. I should know this. I have a feeling it's San Quentin. <laughs> I mean, I did read the book, right? Um, from what I understand, uh, his part of it was, um, when there's like a hit out on somebody or whatever, um, a lot of times there's like a middleman, you know, like, so the, the note goes out to this middleman when the middleman rewrites the note. And gives it out and then destroys the original so that way it can't be tied to um, the person giving the hit. And he was that middleman that rewrote the note. He didn't actually commit the murder, but he did actually. He, it's like a really bad gray area because he didn't commit the murder, he was essentially the fall guy, right? But he also didn't do anything to stop it. So. I don't know. You know. And I. The, the whole death penalty thing. I'm not going to really get into it. I don't know if I really even have. An opinion on it. To be honest. Because. For one. You know. Two wrongs don't make a right. You know that old saying. But then again. And, you know, and the thing is, too, it's like, why, you know, say I got picked to be on the jury. What gives me the right to convict anyone to death? I don't know. Apparently, our justice system gives me the right, but I don't know how I feel about it. Um, because there's definitely just horrific, horrific things that happen. And these people, you know, essentially just get sent sentenced to life in a horrible place to begin with and it's a drain on it's a drain on our resources and I don't know I just I don't know I don't know how anybody could really I don't know anyway we'll just the death row part of it I don't know where I stand on death row I don't really, I don't know. But he became the fall guy, right? He didn't actually commit the murder, but he didn't really do anything to stop it, and he helped bring it forward, right? And he's the only one that went down for it. Like, um, the people actually did the murder, 
Not on death row. But part of his defense team uh, basically got him in touch with uh, Chagdad Tolku Rinpoche, who is a Tibetan, I believe a Tibetan Buddhist teacher who came and did the Red Tara ceremony for him. And Red Tara, Tara is like a female Buddha goddess sort of a thing. Um, it's, it's a, I'm not an expert on it, um, but I believe it's like a yoga for healing and um, it, it's a, it'll, if, if you do it good, I guess, you know, it can lead to enlightenment and so on and so forth, like all the other gajillion Buddhist practices, right? Um, and then, I don't remember, he either died or he left, and then Pima Chodron, Pema Chodron, uh, kind of became his go-to teacher slash friend. And basically his ear, you know. And this book is just kind of about his journey into Buddhism. How he has tried to uh, adapt meaning into his life. Adapt meaning? How, to, uh, how he has tried to adapt his life into having meaning on death row, maybe. Trying to help other inmates um, change their life through, you know, Buddhist practice, Buddhism practice, Buddhist practices cannot talk today. I've, I've had my coffee. I have no excuses. And uh, also the, the fight on uh, of him trying to appeal his death sentence, which <sighs> the book made it sound like he, if he could just get that appeal for his death sentence, he'd be a free man. I just, I don't see that happening. Um, and, and I'm not a lawyer. I, I'm not an expert on... Um, I'm not an expert on any of this stuff, but I would assume that even if uh, he did get his death sentence of kill, he'd still probably be serving life, right? I mean, he still helped carry through this murder of the guard. He didn't, it's not like he's innocent in all of this. Well, you know, you can, you know, I guess his. His thing is that, you know, he was in the gang life and, you know, if he didn't, if he didn't, uh, partake in his part of it, then he would have been the one getting killed. But again, then again, he put himself in these situations to get to this point. So I don't know how you could, I don't know how you could justify just letting him walk from it even if he did get it overturned right i mean it's not like he was innocent so i don't know and so you know he's he got married i think uh he got married by one of his supporters a big um online petition trying to get him off of death row getting getting him gets the warden to be acquitted and setting him free. Um, I just. Uh, I don't see it happening. As of the time of this. Oh, this book was written in I think 2020. It's a really. Recent release. And he's still sitting on death row. I imagine even if he does somehow get acquitted. He'll be sitting there for a while. I don't think they just. You know. The, you know, you get quit and then all of a sudden you end up in Gen Pop or whatever. Or, I, I don't know. But, yeah, it's just, it's a hard book. It's a, it's, it's a powerful book. 
just it, but it, it's hard having sympathy um it really is it, it's it's one of those books that makes you think you know is he you know he he got sentenced to prison for for armed robbery ended up in the gang life didn't really do anything to change this until until he got you know sentenced to death you know at what point is it is it just too late you know I respect him for trying to change his life and everything and trying to help those around him but at a certain point you know at a certain point you know when is it just too late I don't know you know, just don't know. I do believe, uh, you know, I, 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 I do believe that he changed. You know, I don't, I don't believe that he's still violent or anything. But, you know, at this point, he still has hope. So, you know, if there's becomes a point where he just loses all that hope, will he be able to continue with his practice and um, stay on the right path? It would be it would be interesting to follow uh, what happens through all of this. And I wonder if uh, down the road if there'll be a you know a follow up to this book. So yeah, Buddhist on Death Row. Have you read it? Do you know about this story? Do you know about you know, Jay Jar Jarvis Masters and his his fights and things? It's definitely a you know, it's not a very long book. It doesn't take any time to read it. Um, I think, you know, it's hard. It's just one of those things. It, it's it's hard. It's hard to get behind the fight to set this man free. You know, just because, you know, you, you see the light after the horrible deal, uh, deeds you've done. You still have to take responsibility for what you've done I'm not sure if he's taken the responsibility of his part in any of it so I don't know that's it for this one peeps cheers